And I mean, that's essentially what the Democrats are doing right now. The establishment Democrats. Turn this on. Uh, so Jimmy Dore. I, uh, uh, when I want to find out what the, you know, the real left is supposed to be doing, when I check out Jimmy Dore, I really like Jimmy Dore. You know, I, I got a gift. Not a gift. I mean, I bought it. Oof, here it is. Oof, just a second. Get it. Uh, look, look at here, look at here. Look at here, look at here. Put the thing here like that. I guess it went okay. Like that. <clears throat> there we go. I've always wanted a globe. I got that. Hey, look, this is where we are. Africa, right? Oh, down here. Down the south, the eastern Cape of Southern Africa. Oh, by the way, look, see, I'm wearing. I'm always going to tell you about my fraternity brother, uh, Professor James Conyers. This is from Keene University. He's the head of the Afri Africana Afro American uh, Studies thing. But let me tell you something about this. See, this Senko, yeah, but you, most people, you should know about Senko. Senko for looking back so you can, well, out here, yeah, Senko for better. But you see how the t shirts got the little Madagascar in there? See the Madagascar? Do not buy any t-shirt or anything like that, at least flat surface, that doesn't include Madagascar in Africa. That's just a little, nope. Meanwhile, let me put this globe over there. I'll get back to that later. Oof, cut my glasses off. Okay, this is, might be a, a rather long um, talk thing by me. So strap on. I don't know where I should put this. Uh, let me put it back here. Move out of the way. Let me put it over here. Uh, get my light right. And so you can see my lovely face. <clears throat> okay. Um, actually, this is going to, I'm going to tell you about travel. We talked about travel a little bit before. It's a big, wide world. Let me point something out. This might take some people back. But you see Africa, well, right? Let's call it by the Wakanda area, which is like where, you know, Kenya, you know, Lake Victoria, they call it Lake Victoria is. Well, here's my belief. Okay, I have, th I have a theory. Do you want to hear it? The Richard Pryor near you. Oh, it's jokes. Okay, I believe um, in Lake, Lake Victoria, well, Lake, no, by Ghana, no, it doesn't matter. The, the, the lake in the, middle of, uh, in the middle of Africa down here like that. Well, Adelaide Lake is, was one of the sources of the Nile, so, so the river, so you know the Nile f goes up, right? Well, most other rivers go down, so of course, I know we're in the middle of space, but up down. But also, if you really look at it, that, that, that river goes up, you know, to, you know, of course, to, uh, you know, to Egypt and stuff like that, right? Uh, but there's supposed to be another river in Ruff Russia that also goes up. I used to give workshops where I had a flat map, and I used to turn them upside down because the peaks like that. Doesn't it make more sense like that because the landmass is here and the peaks are here? That the world should look like this, and that way the Nile River should be would be flowing correctly. But also, here's the other trick. There's supposed to be, if you put the tectonic plates together, these continents back together the way they should be, this is South America over here, then if you follow the Nile, if, if the Nile River is going up from here, then there's another river coming like that and going down, that's the Amazon. So they're sort of connected. So I believe that that's the source of life, you know, coming out of that primordial swamp, da 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 da. And then they, the, the humanity spread out from there, okay? Now, I think that what's supposed to happen, as it spreads out from there, it's supposed to go up to da 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 and then at some particular point, people are supposed to sort of mesh together and sort of come back back to Africa, okay? So basically, um, you, you, let me leave it at that. I'll continue this theory some other time because I want to go to something else. Okay, my traveling. In 1973, I believe? Yeah, I think it's 1973. In 1973, I think it was 1973, I had a choice. Um, I had a choice. Uh, I was in the Air Force. I was at the McGuire Air Force Base. It's, um, it's called MAC Command. It's like Military Airlift Command. Mil military Airlift like that. That's where the, the blood banking, but it doesn't matter. We, we, we had that. That's where I saw the first saw the Saudis. You know, the Saudis have been trained in the United States at least since the, the early 70s. You know where they were Saudis? It's talking about the airplane, the, the, the fighters, whatever. Because they had patches on their sleeves in Saudi Arabia. Oh, I never talked to really talk to them. What was in the head like that? 
but um, but it was kind of strange. We've been we've been have we've been training the Saudis since the early seventies how to bomb and whatever. And now they bomb in Yemen. You know, it's our fault. How fault? I'm talking about Americans' fault. Now, I actually think about. It. Hopefully, somebody at the, at the uh, ADUS conference uh, in October will have some patches ADUS, but who knows? Okay. So I had a choice. I could either um, uh, go to, I think the, the planes were going to, was it Egypt or Ethiopia? I think it's Ethiopia. Egypt, Ethiopia. Some place in Africa, there was planes going there, delivering stuff. It must have been Egypt. I don't know. And then, they were, then and of course, I can go any place else in the United States because I'm in the military. don't even need a passport. I just get on a military because my, well, I just get on a military plane and I can be. So uh, what I did is I, I, in my brain, somehow I said, you know, if I travel out the country now, then... It's not right. I won't. I don't. I, I just felt I would keep on traveling. Right? When I say traveling, I mean I would start traveling. As it turns out, I started like um, I really started traveling outside the country in 1986. But we'll get to that in a second. So I went to I went to California instead. Um, we was in McGuire Air Force Base in uh, New Jersey, surrounded by Fort Dix, the big army base. Okay. So I went to California, and I don't think I didn't think I knew anybody there. I just showed up. <laughs> I was in the military. But I just showed up. And, and, and let me. This is pertinence to the thing, but I'd be kind of short with this. Um, and uh, I basically, I got, I got adopted in Richmond, uh, Richmond, um, uh, 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 California, you know, right outside of San Francisco, you know, by, right outside of San Francisco, um, you know, by Oakland and stuff like that. Um, when I say adopted, I mean, I was hanging, uh, somehow hooked up with this guy, and, they, and his whole family, they liked me, we were talking, da, da, da. so they took me around, whatever have you, and they said, anything you want. Now, I had heard that my, my brother, my older brother Gregory, that he was someplace in California. And I said, you know, I hear that my brother's around here in, in, in San Francisco, I think. And he said, well, it's a big place. How are you going to find your brother? I said, could you just take me to the, the best dance club that, that they have in San Francisco? And we talk black circles, you know what I mean? So they said, okay, so we go out, yeah. So they went over the, over the bridge there. And it was still kind of early in the, in the dance, like it was kind of early for the, for the club. But the club was open like that. We we walked in we walked in the, the door. On the dance floor was my brother. Dancing, you know dancing back then house music or or, or that kind of dance, even early seven, even though house music really wasn't hit at then. Um, you actually dance with the room. You don't dance with people. So my brother's on the floor just dancing. Now, my brother's the kind of person, let me tell you, in fact, one of the moves he did on the floor was he ran, walked up the walls, flipped out, <laughs> come back on the floor. I can, I'm a good dancer, too. I don't be doing that acrobatic stuff, even though I was trained, even though I did uh, high bar in high school and that's matter. So on the floor, hey, Anthony, hug, blah, 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 hey, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I bring that up to say there's a spiritual, um, Connection to, to, to for me to travel. Like right now, it's raining out here in um, in, uh, in Allison, um, in South Africa. And every time I ever travel, I start travel. If it's raining, it's like a good sign for me, you know. Okay, let me skip now. Okay, so let's leave that alone for now. So I didn't travel, but then uh, about 19, my first trip really officially outside of the United States, you know, of, you know United States. Uh, was in 1988 when I went to Newport Jazz Fe Newport, what am I talking about? When I went to the uh, Montreal, Mon you know, Montreal Jazz Festival out there. Now, I have this habit of I travel on my birthday. Usually I travel on my birthday, the two days I like to travel on my birthday and also New Year's, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, like that. Left this in July. The, the, uh, Mon the uh, Montreal Jazz Festival happens in July. Um, uh, so I took, I took, I like train travel too. So I took the train from New York to Montreal, okay? Now, is that, I, it was on my birthday, yeah, it was on my birthday travel. And uh, on the train was, uh, you, know, you know, you're a train, you talk to people that are, and so the train, train was being delayed. Anyway, we had a good talk up, and there was this guy I was talking to, you know, everybody was talking to, but this guy happened to have, because, you know, gay pride in, um, in uh, New York happens in June, so he was there for the gay pride thing. He lived in Montreal, and he was just coming back this time, so we got to talk up. So he's coming late into, the, into Montreal, because you know, the train got delayed, whatever have you. And, he's, and we had talked, he said, he said, oh, this is your first time, da 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 This early, we established all that stuff. And he said, well, I was pretty, and I said, well, I was pretty late. I got to jump to the hotel. I said, well, look, I'll tell you what, you can, you can spend the night, you know, you can spend the night, you know, in, you know, crash at my place, you know, on my, on my couch, and then, um, and then the next day, I'll show you the good area where you can get a good guest house, whatever have you. Now, let me tell you something like this. 
I'm secure in my sexuality, so it doesn't matter who I'm talking to. You know, of course, the back my head, oh, this guy's going to hit on me, da 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 da. It's a white guy, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so we went, it was fine, no, no, no problems like that. He's a nice guy, da 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 da. No, no, whatever, whatever. For you, so called homophobic. I don't know, how can you be homophobic? You're afraid of humanity? I don't know, I never understood that term. Anyway, that was my first time out of the country, man. Right? Then, then 1989, um, and my, I went to, uh, it was a trip, an organized trip to Panama. And this was right before Noriega got deposed. Right, right before they came and got Noriega, it's in that contentious time. In fact, on the trip uh, was um, uh, uh, Robert Knight, who actually got an interview with Noriega, and he, I guess he got a Pope Award for something like that. Well, um, Robert Knight, peace and blessings on his eternal soul. Um, anyway, so, um, so that was my second time out. Then uh, there was a bunch of things happened, I won't go into it, but. Uh, but I had to get, I wanted to get a visa to go to Nicaragua, which was, because uh, it was having elections in, 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 uh, in uh, January of, um, yeah, in January, what, what, the next year, early next year, in Jan I think it was January of, uh, of uh, 1990, okay? So I wanted, I, anyway, the reason why I go to, to Nicaragua is we're trying to get to Bluefields, Nicaragua, because on my program, Normal Radio, uh, well, with, with Chris Grant, the, the great, the great uh, actor, uh, Chris Brandt, he he would come in Normal Radio well, like once a month, once a month a week, no one, but I don't know, probably, once a month we do this whole poetry section and we send the poetry to uh, uh, to the radio to the community radio station in Bluefields, Nicaragua. So I had a presence in Nicaragua and I just wanted to visit them and da 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 da, you know, like that. Okay, so that's what happened. So and so so when I was. So, so anyway, I got on a plane, da, 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 took the trip. I'll tell you about that whole trip some other time. Just my first time going, and I was out. Uh, uh, I was supposed to go for like two months or something like that. Yeah, but I wrote, when I got there, I wrote a postcard. Hey, da, 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 da. Because I had just got a new position at WBAI. I think it was going to be production engineer or something like that. So so anyway, so I did Actually, I'll just cut a long story a little bit, tiny short. Uh, I got back four months later instead of two months, and I got back before the postcard got back at Back. So that's that's how long this was. But I purposely on that trip did not have any c contact with. Um, I didn't have no. I wasn't reading any newspapers or that, 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 or no kind of with, with any like that, with any kind of mass media kind of thing. Remember, this is 1990, so it wasn't like internet. You know, whatever have you happened. Okay. So uh, so so what happens? Four, three pieces of news got through to me without anything because people were talking about one that the Sandinistas lost the election. Two. That um, that uh, Buster Douglas beat up on Mike Tyson, and three is that Nelson Mandela was free from jail. Interesting. Okay, so that was my first f first trip out, and uh, and in because I had to wait for this whole thing with Nicaragua, I was in I was in Guatemala, and I was you know on it sort of like the tourist trail, and um, when I was at this hotel in uh, what I had gone, I had oh I know what I did I had gone to uh, Puerto Barrios and went over to, to uh, Livingston, Guatemala, and um, people look, just looked like me, whatever happened, and I enjoyed it, and, da -da 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 -da. and then I went back to Guata Guatemala City just to, you know, see what was happening with, um, you know, with the Nicaragua visa, whatever have you. Anyway, so it's going to be a long time, so I talked to the other tourists and said, oh, you know, you should go to Belize because you would like it, but don't go to Belize City, and, you know, from the South Bronx. High crime. I'm going like Belize City. What kind of, you know, they say don't go to Belize City because of crime. I'm say what kind of crime could there be? So naturally, I take a beeline to to Belize City. Um, you know, but you got to get the uh, uh, what, what you go from. Uh, you get a a boat a, a, a boat ride. I can take a launch too, but you get a boat from Puerto Barrios to uh, to Punta Gorda. Okay. And then in Punta Gorda, you know, then you're in Belize, then you're in Punta Gorda. Now, I didn't know uh, that Belize was an all-black country, so I was amazed about that. But, so I go, you know, so, so anyway, I won't tell you what happened, because it was quite, 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 quite funny. But one of the things about uh, Belize, and this is what I'm getting to, there's different forms. When we say uh, ADOS, it's, it, well, uh, actually the American descendants of, actually it's chattel slavery. Shadow slavery is different than other slavery. Like for instance, um, part of my trips, uh, I went and uh, I realized when I was in Belize that this group of people looked just like me. So I, I had my only thing I had my, my recorder there. So I basically uh, set it up so I can go to each. Um, uh, Griffin, the people that look might be city. Now, most of the Griffin, um, I think Griffin, I think they might pronounce it Garifuna. It doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying. Um, 
uh, they were there or they exist on these villages on the coast of things like like for instance uh, you know uh, Belize city is a is basically dominated with Griffin right then right below then you have um, a Dangriga I forgot what they call it uh, any Dangriga is the next one down then you have things like same by uh, Punta Gorda right you have Barranco my favorite place on Barranco Belize um, then in, those are all efficient things. Then you keep on going down because you have the Honduras, the Ratan Islands, the Honduras, and then you go down to, of course, uh, uh, Andegragua, uh, Costa Rica, has all along that, that coast that's on the, um, you know, that inside the Gulf, that kind of, you know, the Gulf side, right? All the way down, you know, um, um, Venezuela has good different people, um, uh, 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 Colombia, on down, because that's where they would depart. I'll go into the Griffin some other time. Okay, so. Uh, but the slavery, for instance, in Belize, I have to talk this. Uh, in the Belize, was different. Like they, they that's where your mahogany came from. So you have the the slaves and the slave, so-called masters, and whatever. They were all cutting the logs together because they had to get this stuff that they would cut them and and you, you, they would bring it down the, the river to Belize City, right? That's why if you look and well, if you look at the docks of Belize City, there, there's a lot of glass. It, it's like broken bottles. It's, the, the pier is like built up on this stuff because they would go down there, they would get drunk, you know, no money, so they had to go back up to cut the logs again. So this was the slavers and the slaves birth, actually working together. It's a different kind of slavery. You see, it's not like chattel slavery when you know you definitely own and you sun up, sun down, blah 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 blah. Okay, but I'm trying to say there's different kinds of forms of slavery all over the world. There's the slavery that happened in uh, North America was definitely different. I, um, there's, there's this thing, like for instance, uh, my people's dropped off in, in, in North, my people's come from North Carolina, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina to be ex exact. One time I was at this uh, party, you know, this gathering with my uh, um, spiritual leader, with, with a bunch of uh, people that propone the Europe religion proponents. And there's this woman there, she's living, she says, I know where you come from. I said, oh, where I go? No, she said, I know where your people come from. I said, oh, where my people come from? She said, North Carolina. I said, how would you guess? She said, gap, <laughs> you know? So a lot of people from North Carolina, South Carolina, you know, they have, they have gaps. Okay. Unless they close them up right now. Okay, but I digress. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, so, um, uh, so that, that's what, when you travel, you sort of clue into certain things. Now. I'm, I'm entitling this post, um, I, either I don't need a, D, a DNA, with a, ancestry, a, whatever, DNA test, or I don't want a DNA test, or I know where I come from test. I, something like that, I'm going to name this something like that. Why? In actuality, I had done, I have done a, a, a backwards middle passage, because um, I've been to Cuba, right? Um, um, Panama, I already mentioned. I've been to Brazil, right? And then, um, then I basically went up West, uh, West Africa and Senegal. But what's key to these things, every place I did, I went, I had a spiritual quarter like thing. And what, um, my travels was guided by, by, by the great spirit guides my, my travel. I don't, I, I travel, I don't have any money or anything like that. He said, you don't have any money. That's how I travel. I go, so it doesn't matter if I know the land. I get someplace and people just like me. They put me up. Uh, that that first trip before, well, that first trip when I went to to do all these um, uh, interviews with the, uh, with the guy from the people, with the Griffin people up and down this thing, it was interesting because I would show up in a village. Let's say I think, like St. Bite is a good thing. I sit, uh, show up in St. Bite and I stand there. Usually it was in the later part of the day, you know, the sun is going down, something like that. And I just stand there because they'd be playing dominoes or something like that. I stand there. And after a while, somebody would look up and say, oh, hello, da, da, da. what do you want? Now, Belize is an English speaking country. I said, well, I'm, I'm here. I got to do some. Uh, uh, I just want, I need to, I, want, I need a place to stay. Uh, I'll be here for about three days. And I need to talk to the mayor and I need to talk to the village historian because we're doing a project. And I said, no, I need a room or something like that. And inevitably, inevitably, there will be somebody in the village some, that has an empty room because their older child son would be up, would be up in the States. You know, that's when I recluded into a lot of people from Belize. Actually, mo a lot of Bel uh, Belizeans or Garifuna people ended up in the South Bronx, in my area of the South Bronx. You know, I didn't know that time like that. So that's why if you have a large contingent of uh, uh, Griffin or you know, people from Belize in the South Bronx. Well, that's because they, well, they left their home. 
Okay, so uh, so I so I had a room there like that. And then I immediately try to suss out the mayor, find the mayor or the historian, because each village had a historian. I should say that each village had a historian would know the history of that village. Okay, so I start by basically either talk, basically the historians were the best to talk to. So I talk to them, da 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 da. da I spend in the evening, but uh, I'm sorry, I wouldn't take out any equipment. The next day I would take out equipment. I just searched out people, and then we would we would. Um, you know, I have these interviews, that, and then I would talk to the regular folks, okay? Now, I bring up same bank because I think it was, no, no. One of the, one of the, um, villi one of the Griffin uh, settlements is in Georgetown. Georgetown was the only one inside as a farming community rather than a fishing community, right? So I was there one time, and, uh, and I think it was the last day uh, I was going to leave the next day or something like that. It was like the third day or something like that. And a bus sh shows up, and it's like a school bus, no big bus. And all these kids get off, all these white kids get off, you know. And it ends up that they are, they are um, from Columbia University, New York. Um, and they're on some sort of project, so they have these surveys and centers. They go down and they, they're asking people questions, right? So I'm standing there listening to one, one woman answer one girl. She's a girl. I asked this woman a question, and she asked a question like, well, uh, how many children do you have? And I said, well, I have two. He says, uh, the, the, are you married? She says, no, I'm not married. Uh, da, 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 da. Then she said, da, 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 da. Okay. Then, she, then when she's ready to say, excuse me, can I ask, can I ask some, some questions? Can I ask some questions? I said, I said uh, do you have a man? She said, oh, yeah. He said, well, where's your man now? Oh, he's, in, he's, he's working some other place. Uh, I said, okay, thanks. Now, you see what happens here? When that gets reported, that's why I don't do these polls and these surveys and stuff like that. Come on, what happened there? That would that would be, have been reported as there's a single woman in this you know a village uh, with two children and no man, right? But in actuality, even though she wasn't so-called legally married, whatever, she had a man living with the children, growing with the children. He's out responsible working, and she's doing what she's doing. But that doesn't get reported as that because that's not what the question was. That's why I hate these these academic things that they, ah, I don't know, because they didn't even spend enough time, you see, I always, that doesn't matter. Okay, so that was, uh, so I needed to tell you that, um, but here's my little journey backwards, right? Well, I say every place I'm, I've been to, I'm going to skip around just just a little bit. Um, uh, my experience, they say, in, in Cuba, I felt very comfortable in Cuba. Now, as you know, this, the slave trade, the Middle Passage, the first before they did the Jamaican thing, this Cuba was the first stop, like that, da da da, da. Okay. So, uh, so that was, I, I really like Cuba, connection to Cuba. Belize is where I had the greatest connection. In fact, that place I call Barranco, Belize, because I've been to Barranco the first time I went in. I've been like three or four times to Barranco. And we, you take a, bo a launch, a boat in, right? Then there's this river, if it's, uh, if, in, in, if it's, if it's um, the season where the river is overflowing and you can't pass the river, but if it's down season, you can walk walk across the, the river, you know, and it's a long way to Belize, I mean to uh, Barranco. And one, I've been there several times. One time I walked through that thing and there was all these butterflies. Wow, all these butterflies came. It was beautiful. Another time, I have to tell you this time, and when I was, I was in, uh, in Barranco and there's this, and then the walk to the river is like an hour and a half, something like that, but there's a little town in Midway, I think they call it Midway or whatever it is. I can't remember. I went there one time and, and excuse me, just go there and wash in the river, even though you can wash someplace else. And then I was walking back. And I was, I was looking. There was, there was this sort of disturbance, and there was this bird. He's going, and he rolls up out of the swamp. You know, I'm going, wow. Now this bird, the body of the bird was as big as a human being. The wingspan was like, the huge, <laughs> long. And I found out later, it was a, a condor in the wild. It's a condor. But here's the dumb thing. Now, remember, I grew up in New York City, and when you go to 42nd Street, the city, when they had these movie theaters, 42nd Street had three, they would show three, you know, three features, and, and you know, all the dudes would be there, and, and you know, you, you talk to the screen. Like, so you see some monster film, and then, you know, the, the woman would be in the woods or something and running, or not running, and you say, get out of there, what's the matter with you? You're talking to the screen, you're like that. I realized later that, you know, I was being, I would be looking at this bird, that bird could have picked me up and take me away, but me, me and my dumb behind it, they watch him, I should have been cut out there anyway. Only because it said, you know, you, you, you say you're gonna do something, you, well, you, in hindsight or whatever you see, but you may not do that same thing. I just wanted to, I want to try to say I had a lot of spiritual experiences, Bronx, some other experiences too. One time some kid, doesn't matter, a lot of experiences. Okay, 
my 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 Brazilian in, in, interesting interestingly enough, my even though uh, I don't think, but maybe had some people in Brazil. My Brazil thing was very very interesting. Um, but I have to tell you that trip another time. I'm sorry, but let me just say I, w I was in uh, Salvador Bahia, the, you know, where all the black people are, the real black people are. And when when you talk to them on the ground, they will tell you when they was touring a rainbow nation in, in, in Brazil back then. They said, "Rainbow, get out of here. This is racist." Da, da, da. The real people will tell you this, but you know, the, just like in South Africa, they say, "Oh, we're a rainbow nation." But when you get to real people, they go, "Nah, you you got to be kidding me." Anyway, so let me leave Brazil right now because we're doing the middle passes, right? So let's get to Africa. Uh, so. Uh, when I first came to, uh, this was in the 90s, um, uh, 98, because I left, uh, uh, 96, maybe it was 96, whenever it was, uh, uh, we had a radio conference in Dakar, Senegal. Um, now, I have a habit when I'm going to some place, I fast first. So I was fasting, and it was the first time in Africa. I was I had my beer and bow because I was I had been taking. Uh, I mean, um, oh, I had been with uh, Master Master Jal ja who who's Brazilian, and doing a capoeira. But a capoeira Angola, which is low, which we low to the ground. It's not the, the hegenal. His hegenal is pronounced is regional, but they pronounce it the R or like the H. Um, in fact, I know the guy, Shalom, and um, and and and, and what's name, who brought, um, who who adapted Hedjinao from, um, who adapted Angola to the Hedjinao because they was they were down in San Paulo. They went down to San Paulo and teaching all the rich people, and they wanted to do the the fancy stuff. We you know they had no shirt on, the match, no shirt on. They have the belts and stuff like that. You know the, the different color belts, and they do the stand up thing. They do a little spinning like that. But uh, but um, Angola is low to the ground. And uh, every, you don't have any demarcation. You don't know. If you go to a class, you don't know who is who. You know, you don't know who has skill because you, you play, it's called a game. You're playing a game. I, we'll do something like that. Anyway, so I have my beer and bow. Uh, and when I got there, it was amazing. You know, and when I went into the airport, something happened. You know, and it ended up that I got, I got left at the airport with just my beer and my, my, my bags and got on the, the transport and they were gone. And I figured, well, they'll figure out that I'm not there. They'll come back for me sooner or later. So I was just in the, the airport was pretty empty. So I was just in the airport and I pulled up my beer and start playing my beer and about. <laughs> playing the beer and about, right? And there was this brother, young brother there. And uh, we got to talking. Ends up he was going to Brown, uh, but he was Liberian. He was going to Brown, and uh, you know we talked for a while. And he had missed his plane, so we talked for a while. Da, 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 da. At some particular point, he told what well, he told me everything about that culture. Mainly, he told me about you know, you know the Marabus or the you know the head like Imams, the Marabus and um, like chiefs. You know, uh, and he told me more 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 importantly about the Bifal. The Bifal is these these like. These cats, they're, 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 they're Islamic, they're Muslim, right? And they're attached to a, they're attached to a certain thing. And what they are is they, they have first of all they know a lot of languages. They have the, they, 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 um, they have locks, right? But they really dress sort of like raggedy, you know, and stuff like that. And they basically hustle the tourists, right? And so, <laughs> and well, that's what they do. They hustle the tourists. And but the thing is, one of the things he said was very key. He said. You know, if you they, they have this thing, if you give to one bifall, you give to them all. Here it is. So anyway, to, uh, let me show you something here. This wasn't this trip. I had gone back another time. Uh, that was that trip. Uh, a lot of things happened there. I went to uh, Gori Island. I almost got possessed there. Uh, thank goodness for Kumbatore and his other sister. They, they got me out of there because uh, I can't explain it right now. I have to do that. Now. No, I should explain it right now. Stop. Okay. When we go, to, we went to Gory Island. Like I said, I was running around. I was well, I was barefoot, <laughs> swimming around my bare body, whatever have you. We was at this hotel, and uh, it was newly built by the by the by the, I don't by the by, by this I don't know if it was the Saudis, but 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 the Muslim, the Arabic somebody built this whole this hotel from his like six stories, the, uh, and six six yeah six floors, uh, and uh, and I was very busy doing an audio drama creating an audio drama, but I would always take time to talk to all the staff and everything like that. And one of the guys at the end, and I would do things like we had dinner then near the end, I said, people, we do the collection. I said, we need to collect for the staff like that. And I made everybody put more money. I, could, I said, put more money in there, da, 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 da. And so we gave the staff a big thing. Anyway, they, when, I, when we was leaving, the guy, one guy came to me and said, you know, you have to come to my house. 
because I was, I, I was supposed to go up to uh, San Luis, uh, San Luis, uh, up, up like that. I said, well, you know, Papa. He said, no, no, you have, you must come to my house. You know, we'd be talking to staff, and all these people, they were running around. They would ignore us. You, they're supposed to be so co close to that. But you were the only one. To, we knew you were very busy, but you were the only one that sat and talked to each and every one of us. We really respect you. You must come to my house. He happened to be, uh, he's a Muslim country, but he happened to be Christian. He was actually end up being the, the choral director of this choir there and most people on this trip is uh, you know community radio people they were sort of arrogant but they didn't realize that because of the situation a lot of the people that serving them were actually ex teachers people of status but because they have a short staff they would just you know fill in for you know because the hotel was new anyway so um so so i ended up do go going uh, vis visiting at, at his place and then i came back the next month okay and come back the next month uh, I, sp I spent time in um, his place was in Charoy. Charoy is like just above um, above uh, uh, um, Dakar, and you would think of think of like the Bronx. Dakar, the, 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 Charoy is like the, the Bronx of, 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 of Dakar. Anyway, so in, there, in that trip, uh, we also took a trip to um, the holy city of Tuba. Tuba is the Muslim city, and in this city, it's a walled off. And the big marabou is there, right? And in this city, to get in, the 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 the, the, the bifalls, they, they check your boot and everything. You can't bring in alcohol, cigarettes, none of like that. And and and, you, and the punishment is they will they'll cut your arm, they'll cut your hand off. Serious, you know. So we, we, we get there anyway. I'm gonna cut this one short. I'll talk some else sometime else about this trip because it's very interesting. Um, so they gave me this. This is this famous marabou at 42 years old and what this is travels me all the time this is a free pass i don't even know if the guy's still living sheikh salon mbake anyway this is tripping this is like a free pass this is written out this is like a free pass for me if i go there any any trouble just with the, i just pull this out and say poof and i'm i'm good hey fortune isn't it okay so, um, so, so in a way, I took a, a backwards trip to 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 uh, my middle passage was 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 backwards. What I'm trying to say, but one of the things that happened was there. Then I came back the next month, and I went to uh, there was a oh George. Um, there, there's a Captain ran a radio station in uh, Gambia. Now Gambia, the, the Gambi, uh, speaks um, uh, they speak English too. But when we were at that. That conference in the car. That's when the uh, some cats walked into the radio station, his radio station, and basically took over the country. It was a coup while he was while he while that while, while he was in at this conference in the car. Was interesting because they were part of my 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 presentation that day, and they all had to leave to go back to the thing. Anyway, the next month I go and visit him. Now this is interesting. Remember, I said that at Gory Island, I was almost possessed. I mean, literally, they, I mean, so I'll tell you how it happened. When they, they give you this thing, when you go to the door, no, the, the door no return. I had done this whole thing and changed my clothes and and, was, and I got this outfit and I was you know, total African attire. Anyway, so the guys up there, yeah, but he's up on like a perch and he's talking to the uh, group, whole group, they're telling about the history of the slave cap and what happened. And somebody was he was doing an interpretation because guy would do it in French, yeah, no English, no French, French, and then there would be an English interpretation. Our group, uh, the World Association Community Broadcasters, Bamak, the three official languages are, are French, English, and Spanish. Uh, so, so this guy, how we used interpreting the French, the guy with the English guy wasn't having it. So somebody else took his place, and he was really forceful, and he would do like this, and, 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 and boom, he hit this, he just had to change it, he boom, boom, at some particular point, remember where I was, way far away from, I literally blacked out on my feet, I totally lost consciousness, next thing I know, when I came back to class, this guy that was up there with these chains was right there next to, next, next to me, now let me say this, on this trip, it must be a hundred people, whatever, however many people is a big, a large group, say 70 people, 80 people. Out of that group, all, all people from community radios from all around the world, you know, I hate, all around the world. The only two uh, authentically, or uh, we would say now, uh, Afro, you know, uh, 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 American uh, descent of child slavery was uh, this uh, one guy, uh, uh, Shelton and me, we're the only two 
Right? There was other people there, but they were black. We was like black people, but the only two of them. And we, uh, we explained that, look, the way chattel slavery is, if you was a slave, say, in, you know, captive and became slave, in, uh, say, 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 North Carolina, right? If you was a bad slave, you know what they do? They say now, penal colony in Georgia. So you, as bad it was in, in whatever, Georgia, whatever, that was even worse. Just wanted to put that out there. When, and uh, anyway, so this guy was there with these ch the change. He was changed right there. Those chains he had up there was right there, and he tried to hand it to me, right? He tried to, and I pushed him like that. And the and and and, and Kumba and this other well, this other sister. I remember she had the moon face. I forgot what it was. I used to call them my lovelies because they were assistants like that. And and Kumba was my personal assistant because we was doing this audio drama. And uh, they came to me. They looked at me, and they pulled me out of there. I had to walk out of there, you know what I mean? Otherwise, I swear to you, my ancestors would have, if something was happening, I was going to be possessed. I might have been through the door on no return with the sharks and all the rest of that for all I know. Okay, I say that because the next, then when I came back the next month, you know, my friends, that came back the next month, this whole trip to um, whatever, I went to Gambia to, to visit George and see what's happening. And when I got there, it was these new, they, they were young guys, they were running around with their what was it? Uh, uh, there was those uh, Land Rovers, whatever, they zooming out the highway, acting really immature. I don't know what happened there. But, but because I was doing a workshop at George's radio station, uh, I was up in a hotel room, but you know, like that. And I had a thing of traveling back then. I had a cassette tape on one side. I had uh, I had a uh, Bob Marley and Anita Baker. On the other side, I had to I reordered the soundtrack for the mission. The beautiful sound. And, and you're McCord. Mission, mission, hey, this is important. Hope I can find a mission here. Anyway, so I was, I was there. I was there. Uh, we can't. Uh, um, and and I would, I would sort of dance oh, because of house dancing. I would dance in the um, uh, to the music with myself in, in, in the dances. As oh, here it is. Dance as oh, just don't fall. I would dance. You know, I'm a, house, I'm a house kitty, so I would be house dancing, dancing the house music, so to speak. That's so to speak. That's my four. Dancing the house music. Great film on colonialism. Great film. Um, the the was uh, Roland Jaffe, but uh, 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 was um, uh, what's the guy? Um, you know who I'm talking about? Jeremy Irons. Jeremy Irons plays plays this uh, Jesuit priest and. Um, and you know, Robert De Niro plays this, well, this well, it's enslaved, and it, it's, it's a great movie. Unbelievable movie. Get this, watch this film. Great, great, great. Um, anyways, what was I saying? So I was in, I was in, uh, I, I played a, the, the, the mission, it's just a beautiful thing, and I, that would chill me out. But Bob was with Bob, uh, I would dance, being dancing to Bob. I think, oh, I also had another tape we did with House Music on. But I was dancing in the mirror, this is in Gambia, the Gambia. And I was dancing in the middle of the hotel room by myself. I usually dance naked. Now, by myself, just in the mirror. Da -da 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 -da. I saw my third eye. I saw my third eye. I was going, what? And I was just kept on dancing, but I, I, for a long time, the third eye was visible there. I kid you not. I know you don't believe me, but I kid you not. So the long story about this is that I'm an African now, South Africa, and I, want, I travel a lot of uh, place, other places in Southern Africa. I want to travel a lot more. Um, but I ain't going back to Senegal or that coast or, or that area, West Africa, because I don't want to be snatched back. Okay, simple as that, you know? I, and the funny thing is that when, when you're in there, like I see people that look like me, like what, you can say, what's that? Yeah, the slavers, whatever have Sometimes I think they just grab people off the street, threw them in the boat, you know what I mean? Anyway. So, I, 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 I give you that whole story uh, just to, to let you know, one of the things that I'm doing with, with these cats, when I started, uh, doing my these uh, dispatches, it was for another reason. I used YouTube only as a as a archival purpose to archive stuff. And I started just because this guy Belly he asked me we used to talk to him all the time, and he said, "Are you writing this stuff down?" And so this is my way of recording certain aspects of my life like that. But because when ADOS came along, now I'm sort of melding the two. So I want I want to say stuff to inform 
to inform my journey, I'm actually talking to myself, I know I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to myself, to inform my journey, my journey, my, this level through the, the, what I call the uh, ADOS reality. I know it's a movement, but I call it a reality. This is the ADOS reality for me. So I want to get my, re, my history reality and join in, 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 in the ADOS movement or the ADOS reality, as I say. And so a lot of so so when you see me posting, it even sounds like egotistical. I'm actually melding to, I'm melding to my purpose of these of these dispatches uh, for this purpose, and, and it'll become clear later some other particular time what, what's going to happen with this stuff. So um, oh, so I should say this when I post. Um, all my posts are, you know, they have the YouTube standards on it. All my posts are creative comments. So you, anybody can take anything of these posts as long as you give some credit, right? And you can do anything with it that you want. Don't be derogatory with it. I mean, so it's, it's fun like that. Also, if you notice, uh, when I first started, you know, they called me up or they sent me an email about about monetizing my, my channel, something like that. I said, I'll never monetize. This channel never can monetize because it's for scholastic purposes. In other words, I was writing for scholastic purposes. Uh, scholastic purposes, and this is a research project. The only thing I've changed from that time is that if you notice, and I don't ask you remember, I don't ask for people to 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 like, share, or subscribe. You know, if, if somebody comes across the channel, they want to do that, fine. Uh, but you also know somewhere in there it'll say a Bitcoin contribution. This came about because of my project. Something happened, so I won't even ask you to do that. But people who see that Bitcoin thing, and you know, if you want to throw some Bitcoin in at my wallet, you can, right? But I think I'm going to change that. I'm not changing. I'll leave that like that. But here's the thing. I've been thinking. There's a lot of uh, people. You know, the movement or any movement needs money, you know. And I've been thinking. This is interesting. How? How? If you we and certainly the worst thing to do is give some big grant. Somebody give you whatever happened. They want their name or you know they acknowledge whatever happened. No. Say for instance you're a big time. I'll stick with the entertainment. Say for instance. Let me stick with Bitcoin. Say I had a well 50 cent. Right? You know 50. Um, he invested in Bitcoin a long, you know, when it first started. So he had a lot of Bitcoins, right? So let's take 50 Cent, for instance. As, as Not just his Bitcoin, but just his whole money thing. Rather than 50 Cent, like, give it to somebody and they have to acknowledge that, you know, the ADO has got it. I'm not saying this. But this my, my strategy would be this. Either find us, put, make... Donate through other people, or, or, or let's say, for instance, you know somebody, some family, um, that you, that uh, you know, because, because remember, we're into repar, we're into re repair rations. Yeah, I know it basically says we want reparations. No, it's repair rations. That's what we want. We want repair rations. So, like, for instance, you might say, okay, let me support this family here anonymously, because you know, a Yang comrade Yang wants to give a thousand dollars a month. So as an entertainer, you should pick some families that you anonymously give a thousand, you know, give a thousand dollars a month to that family. Just beyond whatever have. Just do it now like he's doing it, right? And then let them know. I know you support other things. But if you want, if you have some Bitcoin, something, you, or even white people, hey, white people, you know, or people, let me call it a Bitcoin community, forget white people, Bitcoin community, if you want to throw some stuff in there, you can, you know what I mean? And honestly, it doesn't really matter, right? But this is what I think part of this reparations, reparations, should be should be, um, uh, and you know, just supporting people on the ground, supporting uh, 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 American distance of child slavery that you know we're in, in trouble, right? Uh, even this, remember, uh, Yvette and I'm doing this, uh, this congresswoman with, with hookworm kind of thing. Those kind of things you should do on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the QT, you know? Just do it on the QT. I think it would be a, a good a good strategy and tactic. So I've talked for a long time. I just want to get certain things straight, what the channel's about. I don't want you to think it's like, uh, you know, egotistical or whatever have you. And I always bring up stuff. I always bring up stuff. So that's this is that's this exhaustive explain to you what this what I'm been what I'm doing, me, I'm being me, T from the Patterson's taking a train to Tibet. At a desk of the DOS at the at ADES of the ADOS letting you know what I only suspect.